Okay, managing your mood and energy. This is so important. So in so many jobs, we can put our head down and focus and get super productive and kind of ignore our mood and energy and basic health. And eventually, of course, that undermines your successful completion of your job. So let's look at a few things here. In the California Commission on Teacher Credentialing, 2009, California Standards for the Teaching Profession, it's a big title, the management of teachers' mental and emotional states occupies only two lines in the entire 17-page document. Yet this is a very critical topic. Effective teachers have very good self-awareness because they pay attention to how they feel and they reserve some of their energy for self-analysis and self-observation. So they might say, you know, I'm feeling a little exasperated today, or I notice that I'm being short with students today. And those are the type of indicators to an experienced teacher that they need to redress something, take a break to replenish, and then get back in front of students with a new attitude and new energy. And the ability to do this makes their teaching and their mood very consistent. And that makes students feel safe in their classroom because their teaching is predictable and emotionally reliable. Uh, also, the ability to protect your energy is critical to not getting burned out. Inexperienced teachers can be at their wits end and still going full bore for days and days until they simply have nothing left to give. So experienced teachers don't let themselves get that depleted and they'll take action earlier to rest, recoup, and replenish. There are a variety of ways to maximize your proximate during the week or weekends and your long-term spring break, Christmas break, summer break, breaks in your school year. And they all start with a focus on self-care. So here's a, what I call an expert tip is create a rubric for indicating your mood for students and teachers alike. And when you call roll, each student can give a number from one to 10 that indicates how energetic or good they feel that day, and the teacher can do the same. So after that, you can connect this to a nonviolent communicating or listening exercise where students listen to and mirror each other's explanations of why they feel how they do that day. And as the teacher, if someone gives a one, you can go over to them later in class and check in with that student while everyone else is doing something else in activity to make sure that nothing really bad or dangerous is going on. Also, the listening exercise uh, with groups and pairs can let the teacher know if anyone is facing a serious challenge or problem that might require more support or intervention from the teacher. Serious issues can be, you know, shared with a school counselor, a psychologist, a nurse, or maybe even police if it's necessary. And this level of support and communication within the classroom can give students a feeling that they belong and that they matter. Um, if they don't have stable adults in their lives or a structured home life, this kind of intervention can really make a big difference. It can really help you too. Again, it helps you as the teacher to be honest and upfront uh, about your feelings and it really helps them to see you as a real person as well. And last is don't forget to support your basic physical needs too. Um, and these seem obvious, but again, when we get into productivity mode, we can forget. Uh, eat healthy, get sleep, Drink water. Bring healthy snacks to school so you're not just at the vending machine eating Cheetos. Take a walk during recess or breaks. Eat lunch near nature. Listen to calming music in your office or in your empty classroom. I always like it in my empty classroom. Uh, number three, take deep breaths. Stretch. Meditate. I love to stretch during the day. It's amazing how much energy is released, uh, pent-up energy. Uh, you can lie down on a yoga mat. I often lie down in my office and my office mate will come in and catch me laying on the floor. Uh, but that's so necessary sometimes. And these you know, small daily actions can really make a huge difference in how you feel. Okay, that's the end of this quick video. Thank you so much for joining me.